This week on the show, we have entrepreneur, angel investor, and the CEO of Buggy, Nicole Verkant. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that spurs of motivation won't last. Instead, it's essential to make it a habit to motivate yourself daily. The reality is we all go through life where we have times where we feel super motivated and then over a few months we fall back into old patterns and lose that initial spark of excitement. So why does this happen? The reality is spurs of motivation are simply not sustainable and achieving long-term motivation is a task we must take on daily. Successful people understand that motivating themselves is their responsibility and that they can't leave it in someone else's hands. Therefore, they make it a priority to snap into action and motivate themselves, whether it's watching a short TED talk, having a quick workout, or simply listening to a motivating podcast while driving to work. They make self-development a priority as they know to perform well in any area of their life, they must first feel their best. The reality is, the next time you feel yourself unmotivated, put on a quick uplifting podcast, listen to your favorite song, or have a quick workout. This will instantly shift your mindset and have you feeling pumped and ready to take on the world. As Zig Ziglar quotes, people often say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. I want to talk about, I know you were also a judge, uh, or sorry, a dragon on Dragon's Den Next Gen. Uh, it's one of my favorite shows. So, so let's talk about that experience. How was it for you? Sure. I mean, that was a while ago, but I, I loved every second of it. I mean, I loved hearing the pitches because only I had ever pitched. I had been pitching for funding, you know, for mm -hmm. years. So I felt like listening to the pitches made me as an entrepreneur, A, I immediately had a lot of empathy for the entrepreneurs pitching because I had only ever been in their shoes. But it also made me a it made me way better at pitching mm -hmm. because I started to realize how you can get people very lost in your pitch, how you can, you know, maybe focus too much on your personal story and not get to the crux of what you're doing. Um, there's just so many mistakes that can be made in a pitch. And, you know, sitting as a investor, as a dragon on Dragon's Den, I felt that um, I was able to really improve my ability to pitch. I was really able to improve my ability to think about business models and think about um, startups in a new way. So it's kind of like that old adage, um, the highest form of learning is teaching. So mm -hmm. I felt like I actually learned a lot from the show and I had a lot of fun and the follow up was the most fun for me. So the, the entrepreneurs that I did invest in, you know, working with them, meeting up with them, chatting with them, seeing what happened to their businesses, mm -hmm. um, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Nicole Verkant, the CEO of Buggy, a delivery service that enables delivery in under 15 minutes, no substitutions and 25% cheaper items. Nicole was also a dragon on the CBC TV show, Next Gen Dragon's Den, a technology commentator on CBC's Exchange and was an investor on the pitch. She is an entrepreneur and angel investor. Nicole, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Daryl. It's a, a little loud and, and hectic here. I'm, I'm in our, our store in Toronto, but it's great to join you. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you. I was just telling you, I am very interested to learn more about Buggy because I am one of those people that use a lot of delivery services. So I'm excited to talk to you about it. But before we get into that, you have a very impressive background. I know that you founded the tech company OMX. So first, tell us about that. Sure. I mean, look, I, when I kind of look back at everything, at, at the core of it, I, I really am an entrepreneur. I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. My father is an entrepreneur. My mother worked in the family business. So I was always around that energy. I was always around that lifestyle of living and like of everything you're doing being surrounded around one mission. So I, uh, I started in manufacturing and then I did start a tech company uh, focused on uh, managing supply chain data called OMX. Um, that's now a part of Morningstar. 
And about six months ago, I got a call about uh, about this business. It had been around since 2014. We're going to get into it, but it had been around since 2014 in um, in a model that has become quite popular. And uh, sadly, the founder passed away, and, and I took it over with a group of investors, and we've pivoted to a, to a new model. So um, I'm very excited. I'm learning a lot. I've never done D2C before. So uh, this is all, this is all a lot, but yeah, my, my background's always been on the entre entrepreneurial side, um, and as an angel investor, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so let's talk a little bit about Buggy, what it is, and why you wanted to bring it to the market. Okay. So <laughs> I know a lot of people have not traveled a lot in the last couple of years, but this is what convinced me. I, I got a call, and I happened to be in the states um, on vacation about six months ago. And in the last couple of years, this particular model that we are have launched has absolutely exploded in all across the United States, uh, primarily through a company called GoPuff, mm -hmm. and all across Europe. So what this model is, what this innovation is, as you can see, we have sourced about 3,000 SKUs at wholesale prices, and we've set up small micro warehouses, so these really small dark stores, dark meaning that you can't enter them from the street. Um, so we are buying our own inventory, we're setting up those SKUs in our own little stores um, so that we have real-time feed to the app on exactly what inventory we have on the shelves. And then we have full-time couriers on e-bikes. So it's a huge innovation on the model that we're used to in Canada. Um, the model that we're used to in Canada involves hiring a gig worker, getting that gig worker to go into um, a retail store or into a restaurant and then after they've parked in the parking lot and, and gone into this large store and shopped at in-store prices, they're adding a markup to those in-store prices and then getting it to you, you know, in however long it takes, usually scheduled for later in the day. So um, what you end up with is it ends up just being a lot more expensive, which is hitting consumers really hard now with inflation and, and grocery prices. So it ends up being a lot more expensive. It takes a long time. And then lastly, there's no ability to know exactly what's in that store in that exact same moment. And so consumers are constantly getting hit with uh, substitutions, price changes, price increases at the last minute, et cetera. So it's a big innovation on the traditional, call it grocery delivery model. Yeah, absolutely. We were just talking about that, how, you know, these delivery apps are so expensive. You know, you <laughs> you buy something for $14 and by the time you check out, it's, it's $30 or $40 for something as basic as a sub or a sandwich. So I want to get more into that. You know, there are companies like Uber Eats, um, Instacart. So I want to talk about why um, Buggy is different uh, and why consumers should uh, go with it. Yeah, like how we do it, I think, is the right question because if you just sit back and think about it, if you order from any one of those, I call them third party app services. So any of the brands you can think of, which is pretty much all of them that exist in Canada, uh, they require the company to hire an independent contractor specifically for that one gig. Think about how you know pricey that would be. They have to then drive to a store, pick up the goods for the in-store price, and then mark them up the margin that they want to make 25 30 percent plus add the service fees and everything on top um, plus the amount of time it takes them they have to compensate for all of that so it just really starts to build in and add and layer into that pricing and um, as we know uh, because of the supply chain interruptions and inflation um, just fuel prices alone are one of the biggest contributors to to food prices uh, so that's all contributing, but it's adding on top of what is already a very, very expensive model to execute on. Mm -hmm. I feel like this model is also better for the environment, right? Because they're yeah. they're using e-bikes uh, opposed to using cars. So it's actually environmentally friendly as well. So I feel like it's a win-win. I know that you guys launched in Toronto and London. You're at your uh, Toronto location right now. So tell us about these launches. Well, our catchment area is only five kilometers, so we actually need at least three locations in Toronto. We have two now. Um, but yeah, the, the location is about 1,400 square feet. Um, we keep them small and tight. We keep the, you know, the shelves high and the, and the SKUs, the number of SKUs that we carry. Um, uh, we keep the assortment wide, but the number of actual products in each SKU is going to be tighter. So it's more real-time um, inventory. But when you come see them, I mean, it just looks like any other store. The difference is that there's a lot of technology involved with the scanning. Uh, once we get an order, the, the pickers are mapped perfectly around um, the path. So it's extremely, extremely efficient. It's very fast. 
Um, and uh, it's actually a very exciting place because it kind of feels like a fire hall sometimes, yeah. especially we had a ton of orders between 5 and 7 p.m. And you're hearing beep, 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 beep. And, and everyone's kind of racing to, to get around very, very efficiently and, and to get, get products. So it's, it's kind of an exciting place to be. Maybe I'm biased. Amazing. And what do you think that this model says about the future of uh, retail? Well, that's what's really gotten me interested and excited. And um, I mean, I've got a product right here. I didn't mean to plant them, but you know, pantyhose. How many times are you off to work? I was so guilty of this. And as I was running out the door, my dog would jump up to say goodbye and rip the pantyhose. Um, <laughs> so the fact that you know you can get these in 10 minutes, um, depending on where you're located, I think it changes the way we think about retail in general. And we're seeing it. The reason why we're launching on university campuses we just launched University of Western and it's taking off there, mm -hmm. frankly, because the younger consumer is already so used to ordering from an app and they've gotten so used to this concept of next day delivery. Now imagine telling them you can get something in 15 minutes. Their planning skills just go even more out the window and they start to rely on that. And so I really do believe now for some SKUs you don't need it in 15 minutes. You know, your Wayfair model for furniture, getting something in a week is fine. But there's a lot of SKUs that we've studied, you know, on Amazon where people will, will accept it and they'll order it for next day, but they wish they had it sooner. Like they've just run out of garbage bags and they're really happy they can get it tomorrow, but they kind of wish they could get it sooner. So um, I do know the model's relevant to a lot of SKUs in the retail space. And, you know, I'm an investor, an angel investor. I love Canadian entrepreneurs just like you. And I am very, very focused on supporting um, Canadian entrepreneurs and craft brands that are that are founded and innovated here in Canada and trying to get those to consumers more efficiently as well. Mm -hmm. And speaking about consumers, what kind of items do you deliver? And you mentioned 15 minutes, which I think is amazing because I've never heard of that. So tell us about the items and the delivery time. Okay, so the SKUs are pretty wide, pet, baby, grocery, um, home, health, stuff you would find at a drugstore. Uh, I mean, I just brought up nylons, um, we've got uh, we've got a bunch of different craft brands, um, and, uh, and and in terms of delivery time, it the app will tell you exactly how quickly it can be delivered. So if we're in a massive snowstorm and we're extremely busy, the algorithm's automatically going to increase that time. So it might be 20 minutes instead of 15. But our goal is to just do it safely. Safety safety is number one, but then get there within the time that we say. So. That is one area where other apps have struggled, where they've always committed to say under 10 minutes. It's very, very hard economically to make that work because you need a lot of people waiting there for the orders at all times. But when people say, like, we, we actually delivered something a week ago and the guy was showed up at the door basically naked, had just <laughs> shower, and he said, I did not expect it to actually be that oh, quick. Oh, wow. <laughs> and the came back and told me that story, and I was like, oh, that, that's a commercial we should use. But the, <laughs> the, the reason we're able to do it is you just, I think the more people understand how we operate, you'll understand how we're able to do it. We don't have to drive to a huge store. We don't have to park. We don't have to wait. We don't have to hire the worker after we receive your order. We have the stores located like these smaller convenience stores in highly dense areas. We're using e-bikes, which believe it or not, are way faster to get across the city than, um, than cars when there's traffic. So you just kind of combine all of those factors and we add a lot of buffer on, a, on, if we tell someone 14 minutes, there's five minutes buffer in there. We're picking in 30 seconds. So um, it's, I think just explaining how we do it makes people understand the speed. Mm -hmm. And you're no stranger to the entrepreneur world, so I feel like this business is in amazing hands because you have so much experience. Uh, let's talk about some of your accomplishments. Canada's Women Entrepreneurship Award, top 40, under 40. So what's been the biggest highlight in your career so far? Um, well, it wasn't the awards. I mean, every time I got an award, I almost felt like it was a bit of a sham. I, <laughs> I've actually been thinking about this recently because I had to do a lot of reflection um, on deciding whether or not to take this role on. And I, I would have to say, and it sounds a little cheesy, but the highlight has really been the teams I've been able to work with. Mm -hmm. And when I met this team, you know, they've been at it for a while. They're still a small team when, when I came. And uh, we've been able to add to the team over the past couple of months. But there's really this, we need to win mentality. There's this just get work done, no office politics, um, execute, execute. 
um, you know, be very straight with each other. So that's always been the highlight of different moments in my life is when you're with the team and everything's gelling really well and you're going after something, a big challenge together. And um, I don't know, it's, it's actually just straight fun. Like sometimes I sit back and go, I can't believe you can make money doing this too. Because yeah. it, if you are having fun, then it, it makes the time go by. Yeah, it's really about the journey too, right? Not just the destination. I feel like I, I can completely relate to you. I'm an entrepreneur as well. And, you know, sometimes it's the thrill of just being with the team and, and having that goal and just seeing it execute so well. And, you know, it's thrilling, right? Nothing is like entrepreneurship, especially the person you become, right? Because you become better, you become smarter, and uh, it really forces you out of your comfort zone, right? So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, it can be scary too. Yes. Yes, it definitely can be scary, but I feel like anything worth pursuing is sometimes scary, right? <laughs> That's how we, we get the, the biggest reward. I want to talk about, I know you were also a judge, uh, or sorry, a dragon on Dragon's Den Next Gen. Uh, it's one of my favorite shows, so, so let's talk about that experience. How was it for you? Sure. I mean, that was a while ago, but I, I loved every second of it. I mean, I loved hearing the pitches because only I had ever pitched. I had been pitching for funding, you know, for mm -hmm. years. So I felt like listening to the pitches made me as an entrepreneur, A, I immediately had a lot of empathy for the entrepreneurs pitching because I had only ever been in their shoes. But it also made me, a, it made me way better at pitching mm -hmm. because I started to realize how you can get people very lost in your pitch, how you can you know, maybe focus too much on your personal story and not get to the crux of what you're doing. Um, there's just so many mistakes that can be made in a pitch and you know sitting as a investor as a dragon on dragon's den i felt that um i was able to really improve my ability to pitch i was really able to improve my ability to think about business models and think about um startups in a new way so it's kind of like that old adage um the highest form of learning is teaching so mm -hmm. i felt like i actually learned a lot from the show and i had a lot of fun and the follow-up was the most fun for me so the the entrepreneurs that I did invest in, you know, working with them, meeting up with them, chatting with them, seeing what happened to their businesses. Mm -hmm. um, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And in your experience or what advice do you have for, you know, someone that wants to quit their day job and become an entrepreneur? Because as you said, it can be scary. There's a lot of risk involved. And, you know, it, it's not for everyone. I feel like there's there's a certain there's a small population that is meant for to be a real entrepreneur. Right. I think people like the idea of being their own boss, but they don't really know what that entails. So for you, you know, with the experience and the success you've had, what would you say um, is required to really quit your job and go for your uh, for a business full term? Yeah. I mean, and I don't know that everyone should quit their day job right away. I do think there's some merit to dabbling in the business and testing out the market. And especially with platforms like Shopify, you can start an e-commerce platform uh, kind of on the side of your desk. So I think that there are lots of cases where you get entrepreneurial minded people in large companies that also have, um, you know, have their side job. I don't, I'm always all in on something, yeah. but I, I also don't think that you either have, like, that, that it's complete like that. My, my advice, and I'm sure you're going to relate to this, Daryl, is when I was starting, the scariest part was I had this, this small mortgage on this apartment. And so, you know, that's why I think it's a lot easier to start when you're younger because you tend to have less mm -hmm. assets and responsibilities to fund. But I remember being very scared of not being able to make those payments and very scared of having to get some capital in and the early days were the worst. Mm -hmm. And I found about 10, they all happened to be women entrepreneurs in Toronto. This was probably whew, maybe 12 years ago now, but I got together with these women. We made sure we got together, you know, once a month and we shared war stories where we were at. And I really got a very good understanding that I wasn't alone. I got some very interesting, you know, just through osmosis and casual conversation, it wasn't formal mentorship relationships necessarily, but I had surrounded myself with people in the exact same situation. And, you know, my fears, they were having the same ones and we were just able to really brainstorm together and help each other. And I think back fondly to those days. And, you know, a lot of those women are women that you, you would recognize their names. They built big companies in Canada today and um, they've all been very successful. So 
I'm very, very lucky that I was able to kind of find some people early on that I could relate to and throw ideas around with. Mm -hmm. I like that, that you, you spoke to like-minded women um, and you kind of, you know, shared your, your journeys together because sometimes it gives you, you know, assurance that if you're going through a tough time in your business, that it might be temporary. Sometimes you just have to change your approach. Um, but there is hope at the end of the tunnel. If something's not working right away, there's always, you can always go back to the drawing board. And when you talk to other entrepreneurs, you realize that it's not an easy journey. It's okay to have moments of, you know, ups and downs. So, so I like that, that you, ha you, you know, you had a group of like-minded people. I think that's important. Yeah. And, and businesses can be so different, but the problems the entrepreneurs have tend to be the same. It's really it's really interesting that way. You can be in completely different industries. You can one can be B2B, one can be D2C, and you could be having the same say the same issue with investors or with with team members or um, you know, you name it. It's it's quite interesting how you can have very 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 similar issues. Yeah, absolutely. And Nicole, I want to ask you, I created my platform to inspire, to uplift and just to have a feel good show that people can relate to. So I want to ask you um, you know, what's the biggest obstacles you've had either pers on a personal level or, a, you know, um, a business level and how did you get through it? I would say overall, a theme for me has been trying to juggle too much. Mm -hmm. I think that's common for, for all entrepreneurs. I'm sure it's the same with you, mm -hmm. Daryl. Um, and I, I think it's really about prioritizing and I have a really bad habit of trying to please everybody and trying to really make sure, you know, I, I have to do what I say I'm going to do, that I won't I won't compromise on. But being willing to say, I can't do that, I'm sorry, I definitely can't get that done this week. Um, I would say overall, I mean, there's been a lot of challenges that come to mind, but overall the top one has to be this theme of, of trying to do too much in too little time and, and just trying to keep all the balls up in the air. <laughs> I can completely relate to that. Actually, I was just having a conversation with my producer about that, how, you know, I try to get everything done. I try to be everywhere. I try to do everything. But sometimes, you know what, as you said, you have to say no and actually also prioritize your mental health, right? And take time for yourself. You know, working is great, but sometimes, even though we're passionate about what we do, sometimes we just need time to, time off just to, to reflect and be a better entrepreneur, right? That time off refuels you to do better so i like that you said that <laughs> no phone sundays or maybe yeah. sunday afternoons or something <laughs> yeah something to you know whether it's working out reading a book doing something or even spending time with family something as small as that really really helps i like that you said that i think a lot of people can relate to that and nicole for our uh, our viewers that want to know more about buggy and start using the service how can they do so you can download the app in the app store. Um, there are some kids games called Buggy as well, but they should be able to find it. <laughs> in the store. Um, and then, and then if you can choose the Buggy store instead of the third party stores. And that's how you can order directly from our stores. And that's where you get the, the 15 minutes, etc. Very nice. Nicole, thank you so much for being on the show today. You're doing amazing. And honestly, I'm really excited to use the Buggy service. Um, I think it's great, especially with, there's so many apps out there and I feel like this one's different. You know, I like that it's environmentally friendly, 15 minute service. There's so many different products that are delivered. So I'm excited to use it myself. Thank you so much for being on the show today and we look forward to having you back. Amazing, thanks for having me. And for all of our viewers that wanna use the Buggy service and get $10 off, you can use my promo code Daryl10. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Hey, you can fly higher than the